distinct pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for this morning, practitioner extraordinaire, board member, member of our hospitality team, and I'm sure practitioner with the most test airline points in the world. <laughs> Practitioner Jennifer Williams. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Good morning, friends. Let me also add my own words of welcome to all of you and to those tuned in on this service on the World Wide Web. In recent times, it has become more apparent as we go about our daily activities, that everywhere we go, we are bombarded by messages of how times are hard and things are tough. But when these messages or discussions come our way, how are we responding? Are we agreeing or are we denying lack and limitation in the realization that good is universal? I invite you to join me now as we look at how in today's world, we can develop a prosperous state of mind. This, friends, is the title of my talk this morning. So what do we mean by a prosperous state of mind? The word prosperity is defined in the glossary of our science of mind textbook as the outpicturing of substance in our affairs. Everything in the universe is for us. Nothing is against us. If we accept that this is so, then we must believe and know that having a prosperous state of mind carries over into every area of our lives and will produce not only an abundance of wealth, but an abundance of health and right action. Therefore, we are not perturbed by the state of the economy, the movement of the dollar, or the increase in oil prices. The key to prosperity then is to build a consciousness of prosperity. And to do that, we must be mindful of our thoughts. It was Ralph Waldo Emerson that said, and I quote, a man is what he thinks about 24 hours a day, end quote. Thus, we cannot afford to entertain thoughts of lack, thoughts of recession, or of poverty of any kind. We are told in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. End of that quote. To help us with this renewed way of thinking, authors Jack and Cornelia Addington in their book, All About Prosperity and How You Can Prosper, recommends a seven-day mental diet for prosperity. And in your program, you will see a flyer with the affirmations for each day. As our beloved pastor, Reverend John, who is fond of giving us an assignment, always says, and I quote, your assignment should this week, should you choose to undertake it, is each day, once every hour, Say the affirmation for the day with feeling in the knowledge that by the end of that day, you would have embodied it. If we are serious about developing a prosperous state of mind, then I encourage you to take the flyer home and work with it this week. Remember, we are each drawing from life what we think into it. As we continue to develop our consciousness of prosperity, we must be mindful that these authors also point out in their book as pitfalls to prosperity. And what do we mean by that? These are, one, trying to get something for nothing. Always a mistake. When you try to get something for nothing or something at the expense of someone else, Remember that there are no free lunches. Pitfall number two, feeling unworthy to receive one's good. 
I know that there is no need for us to feel that we are not deserving of good by the very nature of who and what you are, a child of God. As we look around us, we see the evidence of abundance everywhere in our world for us to use and to enjoy. Pitfall number three, making an enemy of one's competitors. All is fair in love and war. And while many may think that it applies to business, so they would go to any length to be rid of a competitor, this is not the way to prosper. All that we give into the lives of others comes back into our own. Number four, getting yours while the getting is good. This results from a belief that the reservoir of good is going to run out and the supply of what you need is limited. Therefore, you must grab yours now in order to get your share. Such persons hold onto old newspapers, postcards, clothes that no longer fit because they believe that someday they might need them. What they need is a good house cleaning both mentally and physically. Pitfall number five, hating to pay the bills and the taxes. How does this play out? We put off writing the checks for as long as possible for fear of seeing our bank balances diminishing. But sadly, this shows a belief that our source can be diminished. When we hate to pay for goods and services, it also shows a lack of love for the welfare of others. Number six, fear of losing what we have. This is a sure way of keeping ourselves from prospering. When we are afraid of losing our wealth, we are more prone to attracting the very disaster that we fear. Life will give to you as to how you give to life. And finally, pitfall number seven, thinking that there is some virtue in poverty. Therefore, those who have money are to be condemned. Resenting or coveting what another has impoverishes the self and builds a continual consciousness of lack. We should be happy to see when one succeeds, knowing that what God has done for others, God can do for you. Did any of these pitfalls sound familiar to you? In my own experience, I found I could have identified with a few things. And if we can relate, even a little bit to any of them, it is in our best interest if we can quickly overcome them. The story is told of three clergymen who split on a lottery ticket and won the grand prize of $5 million. The first one, a Baptist minister says, this is a blessing, but how much do we keep for ourselves and how much do we give to God? After a few minutes, he said, I know, We'll draw a circle and throw the money up into the air. Whatever lands out of the circle, we'll keep, and whatever lands in the circle, we'll give to God. The priest pipes up. You know, it's a little windy. I think we should throw the money up in the air, and whatever lands inside the circle, we keep, and whatever lands outside the circle, we give to God. They then turned to the rabbi and asked his opinion. And the rabbi says, I think we should throw the money up into the air, and whatever God wants, he can keep, and we'll keep the rest for ourselves. <laughs> Friends, it all starts with our thinking, as everything begins in mind. <laughs> Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder of this great teaching, The Science of Mind, states in our textbook, and I quote, we live in mind and it can return to us only what we think into it. No matter what we do, law will always obtain, end of quote. This we know as the law of mind in action. It is set in motion consciously but its reaction is mechanical, mathematical, and precise. It would do us well, therefore, 
to impress our minds with positive, constructive statements, and the use of specific affirmations can help us to establish a new way of thinking. Here I'll share with you a few easy to remember ones which we can see. I will say them once and you can repeat after me. And the first is, I am prosperity. I think prosperity. I breathe prosperity. I live prosperity. Everything I do prospers. Together, I am prosperity. I think prosperity. I breathe prosperity. I live prosperity. Everything I do prospers. And the next. I place no limit on my supply. It comes to me from a limitless source. Together, I place no limits on my supply. It comes to me from a limitless source. And the third, I refuse to identify with hard times. I'm in business with God, and God's business is good. Let's break it down. I refuse to identify with hard times. I'm in business with God, and God's business is good. OK, can we say that again as that? I refuse to identify with hard times. I am in business with God, and God's business is good. And so it is. While for some of us, affirmations alone may not work to build our consciousness of prosperity, there are also several passages of scripture in the Bible that are referred to as prosperity promises, which we can read that will confirm for us that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And some of these are in 3 John 1 and verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And in Psalm 115 and verse 14, we read, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. And in Malachi 3 and verse 10, it says, bring ye all the, th the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. This last promise holds another vital key in our developing a, prosper a prosperous state of mind. And it is the most important law of life which we need to understand. That is the law of giving and receiving. Since all of life is in continual circulation, if we do not give back into life, we interfere with the circulatory activity, which eventually leads to blockages in the flow of our good. Giving, then, is the basis for building a prosperity consciousness. Just as the seed must first be planted in the soil for the tree to bear fruit. If you want to be convinced that this is so, then start a tithing program on a regular basis. A tithe is 10% of your income off the top, which we give to God. It will make you feel rich, and, in a, and it is a continual reminder that the infinite source never runs out. When we tithe, it brings about a change in our mental attitude. Since tithing is an act of faith, and evidence of spiritual growth as it pertains to supply. In my own experience, I find that that which I have remaining after the tide goes further, and what I have given comes back multiplied. You may ask, to whom should the tide be given? The answer, where you receive your spiritual inspiration. And it may be from a person, an organization, a church, a charity, or for some of us, that would be right here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. When we give the tithe, we should give with joy and enthusiasm, knowing we are participating in a spiritual activity which not only benefits us, but blesses the entire cosmos. 
In the same way we carry out our spiritual activities, such as meditation or spiritual mind treatment, let us make the commitment to tie to where we receive from spirit, knowing we are truly giving to God's work. As givers, it is also important that we must be good receivers. We must learn to accept our good and be grateful for it. Learning to receive starts with gratitude and giving thanks for good already received by simply saying, thank you God for life, for the air we breathe, the food we eat, services that are performed for us, saying thank you for a compliment received. Let us be mindful that we are not denying someone else's joy of giving because we find it hard to be accepting. Giving thanks is a continual recognition of the infinite source of our good and any person can be a channel for that infinite source. So how has prosperity been showing up in your life? Here are a few examples, past and present, of mine own and other persons which I have permission to share. Normally at this time, I would have invited someone to come forward. So let me do the sharing with you this morning. And the first example is being without a job for one year and with mortgage payments falling into arrears, but praying and knowing that God is working everything out the manager of the lending institution called to ask what was happening, since this was not the norm. And on hearing the reason, offered help by paying one year of mortgage payments and capitalizing it so that there would be one less payment to think about. Friends, that's prosperity. Someone, thank you, someone needed a million dollars for a matter to be settled. And within one week, having contacted a practitioner, they had the million dollars to take care of that need. That's prosperity. Working at a job that you truly enjoy doing and that is also rewarding and provides you with the benefits of travel so that you are able to know places you would not normally have traveled to on your own, that's prosperity. <laughs> And just to share with you, I just returned from Argentina yesterday. That was my first trip. That's prosperity. Someone wanted to buy an apartment, but didn't have enough for the down payment. But having prayed about it, they knew it would work out all right. And the week after identifying the property, they received a call from their attorney telling them that they passed the apartment complex on the weekend and could see them living over there so they would send the balance of the deposit so they would not lose the apartment. That's prosperity. Enjoying good health and being told that your vision is getting better even while aging and having loving and supportive persons in our lives. That's prosperity. There are countless other ways in which prosperity shows up in our experience, but we must be able to recognize it when it does and be grateful for it. Friends, when we put God first, recognizing our oneness with universal life, then our flow of good comes to us from unexpected channels. Let us behold the wonders of the universe, look out and see your good, knowing it is not far off but it is at hand. Having a prosperous state of mind lets us be at peace with ourselves and others, at ease in all situations, knowing that our inner state of being cannot be disturbed by outer conditions, but health, wealth, and an abundant supply of every good thing is outpicturing in our experience now. Namaste.